Okay, before we start the new unit, I think it's a good opportunity to look back what we have done so far, starting from the first unit. So from the first unit, it was about kinematics, and kinematics helps to predict motion. Right, we had the trajectory equations where you could tell the final velocity of an object or the final position of an object. So it's useful to predict the motion of an object. Unit two, it helps to explain what causes motion. And we said that what causes motion was an unbalanced force which caused an acceleration, right? Because otherwise you will have the object to remain stationary or move with a constant velocity unless there's an unbalanced force acting on it. Then we looked at unit three. Unit three mm -hmm. was all about the energy changes. So how energy is converted or transformed into one form into another one. And now for unit four, we're gonna look at how energy flows, travels. So that means that you still need to know unit one, two, and three in order to get the fourth one. And this is a bit strange because we barely even looked at what are the different forms of energy and now I'm going to tell you that we can tell how quickly energy can move. But energy is not really something physical, right? It's not an object, which is really strange because we're going to determine how quickly something that's not physical moves. So this energy flow is what you might be more familiar with from your other courses that you've done before. This is what we call a wave. So now we have the definition of a wave. A wave is just energy flowing, or in other words, energy moving. Okay, so the fourth unit, we're just looking at how energy is going to travel, which is another way of saying waves. And what is required for energy to travel in the first place? A medium. Who gave you this information? The Russians. Yeah, I thought so too. But actually this is correct. We should trust them once in a while. They're our friends. In this case, for energy to travel, well, first let's look at some examples of a wave. That way it helps us to make some kind of uh, generalizations. So the easiest one is the beach where I was supposed to be tomorrow, but I had to cancel my flight ticket. So in the beach, we see waves, right? Water waves. So in this case, what is required for, for a water wave? Water. And what is another example of a different type of wave? Radio. That's a good one, but technically, that, that's kind of like the outlier. Yeah, your hand waving goodbye. Yeah, whenever you come into class, you wave at us, that's a wave. Mm, no, that's uh, disinformation, yeah. Yeah, see what you mean is this. No, think much simpler. So, right now, wh whenever... No, Tianjin, a hand wave is not a wave. Oh, a flag? A flag? When you fly a flag? Oh, so the American wave waving proudly is a wave, right? I didn't say American. No, you're right. That, that's a very good one. So in this case, we have a flag and we have that it's able to flow, or in other words, move like a wave. And what is the medium in this case? The flag itself. I was trying to think of a more simpler one. If you think about sound waves, what is the medium in sound waves? Depends where you are. Mm, and it's true too, yes. But for simplistic reasons that we're going to use, we're just going to say air. All right, so from these three examples, what is required for energy to travel? Energy requires a medium. Now, Oscar did mention a really good one. He said a radio wave. This is a wave, but it is not a type of wave that we're going to be studying in this course because we're going to limit to waves that require a medium. So we're going to try to cause a division between waves. Those waves that require a medium and those waves that don't require a medium. And we want to focus on the ones that require. 
So the waves that require medium, we're going to call these waves mechanical waves. So we have another definition here. Did that make sense? So again, waves, we're going to have two types of waves, ones that require medium, ones that don't require medium. And for this course, we're going to focus on the ones that do require medium, which we're going to call from now on mechanical waves. For energy to travel, you require a medium, but if you look at the example of a flag, what was required for the flag to be waving besides the flag itself? What, what else do you need? Repeat your question. Okay, so let's say we just have the flag, but in order for the flag to start to wave, to, in order to start waving, what do you need as well? Uh, force or energy? Yeah, yeah, no, force. Force was correct. Good. So what's going to be the agent of the force in this case? You mean the medium? No, the agent. So the agent means the, the one that's applying the force. Right, so it, it, think about like uh, your house outside, how you have the Malaysian flag. In which type of weather conditions do you see the flag waving the most? Windy. So oh, wind. yeah, so the wind is the agent that applies the force in order to make the wave inside of the flag move. So let's go to slide two to talk about this a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to look at the flag from a different angle here. And suppose that the wind is flowing this way. What's going to happen? Well, the wind we saw is the agent and the agent just applies a force. So once this force is acted on to the material itself, what is it going to cost for the material to do? The material is going to go some kind of displacement. So now we think back to unit three, what happens when a force causes a displacement? Is it work? Work? I'm dumb. Is it work? No. Oh, work. I think you said woke. I'm like, no, 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 no. Work. I say work. Work. Yeah, work, work. But, but, are, you, but are you woke? Smiles. Uh, this is not the place for that discussion, I think. But yeah, yeah, uh, you quit. You're right. I, I thought you were just saying woke for okay, sarcasm okay. reasons. <laughs> Hopefully the other, piece, the other people here are awake to hear this message, right? So whenever you have a force causing some kind of displacement, and in this case, we're assuming that the angle is zero. Uh, did that make sense so far? Yep, yep. Okay, good. So now that we have this energy being transferred into the flag, well, this energy is causing that displacement, but we said that a wave is energy that is moving. So now, what's going to happen in this flag? We have to zoom in. So if you look at the flag and we look at the chemistry level of things, you can think of this as being tightly held particles together. So what am I trying to draw there? I'm trying to draw people holding hands. Because these particles, they're held closely together through strong bonds. In particular, because this is a solid, right? Solids are usually held closely together due to strong attractive forces. And if one of the particle gets the energy, but the particles attached to the other particle, what do you think is going to happen to this energy? And the particle passes that energy on to the particle immediately beside it. So this one gains the energy, and the one beside it gains it because these two are attached. And because they're attached, or in other words, they interact, then that energy that it gained, it passed it on to the friend next to it. So what am I trying to show you here? When one particle gets the energy, what it does with that energy is then it transfers it to the next particle immediately beside it. Because we're talking about solids, but if it was a gas or liquid, then that energy will get transferred after a collision. Mm -hmm. But because these are tightly held together, it pretty much passes on to the neighbor. So that's essentially what a wave is, that one particle gets the energy, it passes it on to the next one, and then it passes it on to the one beside it, and so on, and so on, and so on, 
until it travels the whole length of the whole wave, I mean the whole length of the flag. Right, so this continues going along towards the right of the flag. So here we have the direction of the energy flowing, which again, energy flow is just another way of saying wave. So the energy is flowing to the right, but in what direction are the particles moving? I don't know. Look at our diagram. Up and down? Yeah, that's it. Oscar, I think you're really good at physics, because this conceptually, you're going to re do really well in this unit. You are right that in this case, the particles can only move up and down, so the wave does not carry any of the particles with it. So this means that the particle from the left does not go to the far right. Well, that's also true in the real world, right? Okay, tough crowd. Uh, let's go to slide three. Again. Sorry, I'm too tired today. I know, you're letting Oscar carry on all the jokes. Oh, you know why else? Raj is not here. You sound surprised. Yeah, he's very consistent with attendance. Consistently inconsistent. <laughs> okay, so in the case, by the way, I'm on slide three now. In the case where the displacement is perpendicular to the direction of the wave, we can say that this is an example of a specific type of waves, which we're going to call, not a very politically correct term, but transverse wave. Why is that not politi uh, politically correct? Because uh, th they did this before politically correctness people came into power. So this is a very old, old term. I think you're, you're, you're making stuff up. No, this yeah. means across. So from where it's supposed to be going, is going in the direction where it shouldn't be going. So across from where it should be. You can, you can put your simple hat. I don't, I don't think he thinks it's not political correct. I don't think he thinks it's morally correct. No, no, no. So transverse, because trans means across of where it's supposed to be going. So energy is supposed to be going to the right, but the displacement is across of this, which is perpendicular. So these types of waves are called transverse waves. And in order to distinguish between this type of wave and the other type of wave where the energy flows and the displacement flow is along the same direction, we're going to use another example. What am I trying to draw in this case? Spring. Spring or slinky. So in this case, we have the hand on the, on the left side. And then the hand applies the force directly to the right. And the displacement is also going to be to the right. And in this case, which direction is energy going to be flowing? Right. So in, in this case, whenever the energy flow is parallel to the displacement, we could say that this type of wave is a longitudinal flag. Not, not, not flag, a longitudinal wave. I was thinking about the American flag. And one clever way to remember this you can think of this acronym here is along the wave. So the displacement is along the wave. Any questions so far? No. Oh, my house is so oh. hot. I have no AC. Why not? Because of the new green deal. All right, let's go to slide four. How can we increase the speed of energy flow? So we see how we can transfer the energy in the first place, but how can we make this energy transfer faster in the medium? Let's get unified. Attention medium. What, what did you say, sorry? 5G. 
5G? <laughs> well, that's kind of funny, actually. Yeah. Um, a denser medium. I, I can't make out what you're saying. Attention media. Dense, dense. You know Donald Trump? Dense. Dense media. Yeah, dense. It needs to be more dense. More dense. More dense. Do you need me to spell the word out for you? No, maybe there's like a young way of using the word. I haven't really seen this word used this way before. D E N S E. Hmm. Maybe we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. Okay. Um, well, how does energy get transferred from one object to another? If we're talking about a solid, like the string, what can we do, do between the particles? We can stick together more. Oh, we can make them stick together more. That's what I said. Did you? Yeah, we take the medium and we use a more dense medium. Oh, dense. I, I heard dense. I spelled the word out for you as well, man. I'm like, what does dancing have to do with waves? Because you hear sound waves, it makes you want to dance. So I thought you were trying to be funny. Dance. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So a better way to remember this, let, let's think about an army. How can you increase the strength of your army? What? Well, think about it. What is one way? Because there, there's three things, and those three things can be... I can't pronounce this word. Anthropomorphize, anthropomorphize. You, you know the word when we give uh, like human-like characteristics to objects? Anthropomorphism? Okay, you guys don't know any of these words either. That's fine. Okay, so how can we increase the strength of the army? Well, you can get more army men, which is what you're trying to say by increasing the density, right? Yep. So more people, in other words, higher density. What else can you do? Uh, smaller volume. That is the same thing as higher density. Right, more density, it could be a smaller area. Get better internet. Better internet? Mm, not really. Okay, what if you give more it more energy. energy at the beginning? Oh, that's what I said. If you give more energy, does that mean that energy is going to move faster? No. Max, you're so good. You're right. This is the trickiest question in this unit. Yo. So if you give more energy to the wave, I mean, if you give more energy to the medium, the speed of the wave does not change. Max, you, you, you highlighted the main idea of this unit. If you increase the energy in the medium, the speed of the wave does not change. Yes, sir. So the speed of the wave depends on the medium itself, which with its density. What else then? There's two more. Can you give a hint? I give you the hint. Think of the army. How can you increase the strength of your army? Get better armor. Mm, no, it's not. That, that's thinking too much into the analogy. So first, you have to take away all the free healthcare, so people are forced to go into the army. Mm. Conscription. Army is not a hint. Think about the holding hands. What? So when they were holding hands, how can they, how can you increase the speed of the energy flowing? Is this hand holding going to be really tight or is it going to be loose? 
tighter hand holding. Yeah, so you're going to increase the bond between the army men. That takes time though. Why, why would they hold their hands? Yeah, what kind of army is this? I thought you against men holding hands. Yeah. No, I'm using men in the plural form to include, include women because women can serve in the army oh, too. How do they hold guns if they are? Yeah. Uh, and I thought you were against, yeah, like Max, I thought you were against men holding hands. No, in some cultures, men hold hands in public while they walk around and they're not really engaged in relationships. They're but just right. But, you, but you're not okay with it, right? Uh, I've held hands with some guys before, yeah. Nothing wrong. Okay, so we want to increase the bonds. So how do you increase the bonds? You increase the Either. you increase the strength between the particles, so the bond strength. So you increase the bonds. And the third one, it has to do with morale. So if you give them, uh, if you get them excited, then they're going to pass on that energy much quicker if they're already excited. So would that mean something like? Like heat something up so the particles are more So excited. basically means like adding energy, like mm. You're both correct actually. What? So l let's say that we have like a, a metal versus a hot metal. Which one will transfer the energy faster? Yeah, so that's what I mean by we can get the base excited. So if we get the particles more excited, then those excited particles are able to transfer the energy between one another much, much quicker. And when you, you pass it? when you pass the energy between particles more quickly, that is increasing the speed of the energy flow. So would you say oh, no. you're a guy who can pass energy faster than most guys? No, uh, I'm pretty low energy. I'm kind of like chill, relaxed type of person. I'm hard to get excited, like uh, motivated, really. Uh, no clue, thanks. And then it's actually very hard for you to make jokes. That's why I know why it's not funny. Oh my god. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, thank no, you. Uh, I'm just saying, like, no, no, like, it's not real, it's like not funny, but how you present it also needs to be funny. Oh, so like... So if I just have a joke with a straight face and I'm like, you know, it, it's not going to work, you know. You got to tell with excitement also. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Like, uh, I'm I'm kind of like a low state telling a high state joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Not saying your joke is bad, it's just like, your you, personality maybe doesn't suit it. That's yeah, you don't know if it was a joke or not. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right. So in this case though, I think you gained the idea. So if you think about the army, if you have more army men, you increase the bond between them and then you get them excited. And they're able to pass on the energy that one of them gets to the next one much, much quicker, much more quickly. But now here comes the catch. What is energy flow? Energy flow is the same thing as a wave. So we answered one of the biggest questions of the unit. How do we increase the speed of a wave? Well, you can take a more dense medium. You can make sure that the medium, the bonds between the particles of the medium are more tightly held together. And you could increase the energy of the particles so that way they can pass on the energy more quickly. So by answering how to increase the speed of the energy flow, we answer the same question as how do we increase the speed of a wave? So if um, a wi electrical wire is harder, like a hot electrical wire would uh, transmit more power faster than a cold one would? Is that what you're saying? Not power. Well, I mean power as in electricity, you know. Okay. Yeah, because there's, make... there's less resistance. You're right. There's less resistance. 
Okay, so the main point from slide four is now we know how to increase the speed of a wave. Let's go to slide five. Uh, pardon my grammar, uh, uh, that was pretty badly written. Anyways, in which state of matter is the speed of the wave fastest? Solid. Wow, you must have a really good teacher. You, you, you understood the lesson. Okay. And the second fastest? Liquid. So by elimination, we have no choice but to say gas is the slowest. But, but even plasma, state of matter? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, let's just stick to these oh, three. Einstein, hmm? Einstein is beyond my comprehension. I'm just a high school teacher. Okay, so let's make this conclusion here. So solid is going to be the fastest and gases is going to be the slowest. Is that clear for everyone else though? Because I, I think all three of your friends got it for sure, but what about everyone else? Got it, got it. Okay, Ian is good. Chun Yu is being quiet today. I mean, he's always quiet, but sometimes he at least puts some kind of life on the jam board. Okay, good. Tiam Jin, are you okay? You understood so far? Okay, great. Uh, let's go to slide six. So now we got the idea so far that waves are energy flowing and whenever you have a medium that it, energy is flowing in, we call those type of waves mechanical waves. And from mechanical waves, you could either have longitudinal or transverse based on how the energy flows in respect to that displacement in the medium itself. And we saw how we can increase the speed of energy flow, which is the same thing as the speed of the wave. So if we have more density, that's a good way to see that if it's going to increase the speed or not. But now I want to look at gases for a bit. Because in gases, the army analogy doesn't really hold so true because we were trying to use the army analogy to show when they're holding hands, right? Because you don't only have to think of an army as fighting wars. You could think of the army as people standing up together for a cause and holding hands, right? But in gases, they're so far apart from each other. So how is it that the particles are going to transfer the energy between one another? What? So again, in solids, because the particles are already strongly tied to each other, and in water, is usually the weak forces that are still holding the water particles together, but in gases, they're so far apart from each other. So how can they transfer energy if they're so far apart from one another? Gmail. Gmail. They collide with each other. Yeah, through collisions. So whenever we're looking at gases and we're looking at the efficiency of the energy getting transferred between particles, we want to see the efficiency of collisions taking place. So gases transfer energy through collisions. So what this means to increase the wave speed, we need to the chance of collisions. And this goes back to the same things that we already discussed. How do we increase the chances of collisions? Well, we can increase the density, right? We, we can make the, the be in a container and make the container smaller and smaller and smaller, like Oscar was saying. 
So if you keep on decreasing the size of the container, then the particles are more dense and the collisions are more likely to occur. Sense making? Yeah. Yes, sir. The other one is we said we were comparing hot metal versus cool metal or metal in general. Likewise in here, we can have a hot gas or not a hot gas, which one is more likely to collide? Wouldn't it be a cool gas in this case because the particles would be closer together? No, they won't, they won't go closer together. No, they won't. They the, just the, move slower, right? Yeah, they move slower. So in the time that it took for me to draw those six dots, a high energy particle has covered so much more distance. So that means that it increases the likelihood of collisions. It doesn't guarantee it, it's just increasing it. But if you have a large number of particles, then that just increases the chances of collisions. Normally this is where I look at your faces to see if you're confused, but you usually wear a mask, so I can't tell. And now you only see cartoon characters. <laughs> and Tiam Jin is showing the planet Earth, so that's not help. Okay, no, but seriously, uh, did you understand that part? Yup. Great. Through, through collisions. So these particles, the way we make them move faster is we increase the kinetic energy. So whenever they collide, they transfer their kinetic energy. Right, so after the collisions, some of the energy gets transferred to the next particle and that particle takes that energy and then it moves and it collides with another particle and then so on and so on and so on in the form of kinetic energy being changed between particles during collisions. So now we looked at the states, how to increase the speed of the wave. And we looked at, in order to cause a wave in the first place, we needed a force to cause a displacement. But that's not really 100% true yet. It's more specific than that. So let's go to slide seven. Uh, we're almost finished, slide seven is the last one. So what do you think about waves so far? They're pretty cool, right? Yep, just like the sea. Yep. So cool. Emotionless. Oh, that's because you haven't taken the time to appreciate the analogy. You're like, oh my goodness, I never thought about an army. This is, this, you know, this is such a good analogy. I forgot to even made that analogy. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't 100% truthful. So to have a wave, you, you do need the medium for a mechanical wave. And you do need a displacement but it gets more specific than that it needs to be a cyclical that means continuously being acted on the medium itself so it's just not a single occurrence so the wind needs to be continuously acting on it and then that creates a single pulse Like the pulse, like whenever you're reading your heart, your heart rate. And this pulse is going to travel along the flag. Right, so the direction of energy flow is to the right. And when this pulse hits the boundary, in other words, the end of the flag itself, it can either reflect back along the same direction or sometimes it can get inverted. And after this goes on for many, many, many times, that's going to cause what's known as an interference. So the waves that are being created at the top are in interfering or in other words interacting with the ones that are reflecting from the boundary at the end 
and those two form a standing wave. We don't need to know all those details, but for now, what the requirement for the wave is, we need to continuously create the pulse. So, continuous cycles. So again, uh, I know I went and I made it more complicated than I had to. So we're going to get into detail about what happens when it meets the boundary. And we're going to talk about reflections, whether it should be inverted or coming back in the same direction. That's going to be in later lessons. But for now, what you need to know is that this pulse is continuously being generated. And that's what it means that we create cycles. But these cycles themselves, they need to have an equilibrium line. What the equilibrium line means if the flag was to be at rest. So the requirement for the wave is we need to have these things taking place and that's just called a vibration. Can you hear my doggy? She, she's sleeping. Okay. Cute sound, no? I can't hear anything. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Gia, make cute sounds again. She was snoring. She's having a good dream. <laughs> Alright, back to this. So a wave requires a vibration. Vibration, this all it means is that we need to have continuous cycles being generated about an equilibrium line. That, that, that was a bit random, I know. It's like, okay, what's your point, kind of thing. But we're going to get into more details about this later. So right now, just kind of like an introduction. Introduction. This was the, the first lesson. And now I'm roasting because my, my house is really hot right now. Okay, students. So right now we're in section, section 8.1. We're going to be looking at 8.2, 8.3 tomorrow, and it's going to be online because the CMCO got extended and I won't be able to go to the beach. Yeah, sad. Oh, man. Yeah, you know when you cancel your ticket, they're like, oh, you have to wait 60 days for your refund. That's going to be a long time. Anyways, uh, thank you for participating and thank you for trying to make it a little bit more fun for me and everyone else. That was it for today. And Annie, I'll email you shortly about the time of the test. Most likely it will be after school tomorrow though, at 3.30. Hi, hi. Uh, yes, Josephine? Yeah, that's that's true information. Is it open book? I don't remember if it was last semester. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, Annie, I already said it now. I don't want to send you an email. Three thirty tomorrow. Okay, everyone else, thank you, and then please uh, get some break, and then I'll talk to you tomorrow. Are you, are you, are you done marking a test, though? You don't have to return it. I didn't even look at it. Oh, my God. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Mr. Morange. Bye-bye.